Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. But then you get another player that comes along and he decides that he's going to be trolling them and he's got a cargo train as well and he parks his on the track so I'm not letting you through. I want this contract. And then he says to me, I'm not moving your, I'm not moving my train. You're not going to be selling your grain. Not today. I'm not moving until you pay me X amount. And he basically holds me to ransom. How would you combat that? Would you have trains only operating on a one-way system? Would you have trains unable to block each other on tracks? So despite the fact that he's parked on tracks there doesn't actually have any impact on gameplay whatsoever because the other trains will basically just clip right through it. It, it, it won't stop anything, it won't change anything. The other trains will just fire up as normal and they just drive right through him like he doesn't even exist. Would that be the best way to do that bit? Would that be the best mechanic to implement to take care of that particular kind of hostile behavior? I don't know. I think it might be actually. I think that could be a very good way of dealing with something like that. Um, you can't actually have them stopping you from playing your game because they can't stop you. They can stand there as long as they like. They can park their train on the track. It's not going to make any difference whatsoever to anyone else using the tracks. Contract on field 19 has finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run this one until he's filled up. We're not going to go and empty it out. We will uh, immediately jump over to the field 19 one and take a look at that just to see what we can do. This the field 13 one. Is he still running? I don't know if he should still be running. I feel like something's gone amiss here. Right, let's stop that one there a minute and let's go and have a look at what's happening. So that one's still going. Kramer right there. Field 19. Oh, the contract on field 19 is finished, and now Helper B has finished on field 19. He's done his work. I don't know why he had to go all the way over to there in order to be able to do it, but he had to anyway. Uh, this dude right here, we've got a couple of passes that we're going to want to do up here. Let's just utterly destroy our machine here, shall we? Drop that down onto there. So I will do a couple of passes along here. And then we can turn this contract in and it's all finished. And then we'll also turn in the other contract as well. So we've got a couple of them that we've just finished up. We are in negative money now. That's, that's not going to change, I don't think. But we are at least still continuing on. We've got the contract done here. And I think part of, well a big chunk of the negative money has come because we've been running the guy on the the Kramer up there so we've been running our own hired help in our field and so the money that we get from these jobs here despite the fact that we are also paying out wages for these contracts here to be done um the majority of the money that coming that is coming in will cover the cost of the wages and it will also help to cover the cost of the wages that we're paying out for our own guys i think that's well at least i'm hoping this is going to be the case what else would you like to see in this ultimate simulator now i haven't really talked about the whole mining aspect um you got gold rush the game and i know few of you watched my series that I did on that and a few of you do actually play the game um, I have no plans to actually go back to that one as it is but you know it's been shown that there's mechanics there that you can have uh, an actual mining operation that could work so there's another sort of aspect of gameplay there that could be brought in and could be used now I'm gonna go here so I've got field 13 it's 673 from that one and field 19 and get 775 from that one so i'm not getting a huge amount three fertilizer jobs have now come up so we got those two there let's put us to minus 1000 the amount of money that we pay out in wages for this guy right here this lady right here 
I think that's the thousand. I'm assuming that the cultivating jobs we did do run at a slight profit. I mean, it's not much of a profit. It's pretty much bang on a um, a break-even type job, but yeah, it's, it's not too bad. I, I I feel at least. I think that we're we're not doing too bad on those. What other mechanics could we talk about? with this ultimate simulator game. So obviously if you've got the whole ETS2 type situation going on, you're going to want to be driving across Europe. Now, to be able to simulate a game where you can drive from one kind side of a country to another, um, and you've got massive open world where people can actually do all of their farming, how long would it take for you to drive a truck from one side of the Erlingrat map here to the other? This could potentially be land that is owned by one player. If you've got 100,000 players playing, you're going to want a map that is at least 100,000 times the size of this. So what scale do you use for the game in order to not only simulate the gameplay like that, but to also simulate the fact that um, you, you, you're you driving long distances. But like in ETS2, you're not driving the distance that you would in real life. You're not going to sit in the cab for five hours just to drive from one side of the UK to the other. It takes days to drive from one side of Europe to the other. If you've actually got to sit for real days in order to do one delivery for the simulator game, it's not going to work. No one's going to want to do it. So you've then got to look at scale. And I'll be honest, I think that could be one of the more difficult decisions to make. How do you have it so that the scale is big enough so that players... Any player coming in will have enough land to be able to buy to do their farming. If they want to do it. Um, I mean, I'm looking at this from the point of view of a farming simulator player and assuming that everybody would want to be a farmer. But if you've got businesses in the game that allow you to run a restaurant, run a um, mechanics workshop, you don't necessarily need that. So... I mean, you'd want it on a bigger scale than the current Euro Truck Simulator map is. I can't comment on the ATS map because I've never played it. So I'm, I'm not going to comment on that one. But the Euro Truck Simulator map, you would definitely want it on a larger scale than that map actually is. Definitely. That, that goes without saying because otherwise you would not be able to fit all of the players into the map. Alright, so that's a given. You want more than just the ETS2 map. So how much bigger do you go in order to be able to fit enough room in for enough land, but at the same time, you don't make it too ridiculous to be able to get from one side of the map to the other. Now, it does take quite a long time in ETS2 to drive from one side of the map to the other. I think it takes nearly an hour in real life to drive from one side to the other. Uh, if you're working the game on a basis of one real-time hour is the equivalent to one day in-game then in theory it should take however long it takes to drive across Europe. I think if you're in a lorry and you want to drive from one side of Europe to the other and you've obviously you've got to be able to sleep and so on, that's another thing is the whole sleep situation because when you're driving a truck you've got to be able to stop and sleep but you're not going to want to just sit there and twiddle your thumbs for 30 minutes while you're on your break. So what can you do in that time? There's got to be other things that you can do when you stop off in your truck um, and have your rest stop. So that would be another mechanic that would have to be looked at. What could you do? I mean, would you just like add mini games into it? Um, In-game social media, something like that. 
Social media is a big part of our lives. So we could be in-game social media. That could work. Uh, don't know. Anyway, that, that would be another consideration, obviously. It would have to be taken into account. But how, how big? I mean, I don't know how long it takes to actually get from one side of Europe to the other. I'm assuming it's like three or four days to drive. So, therefore, it should take three or four hours. If you want to go from the northernmost tip of Scotland and you want to drive yourself all the way from there to the southernmost tip of Greece, uh, you could be looking at a week, in which case, in-game, in order to make that same trip in a truck, it's going to take you approximately seven hours of gameplay to do it. Would that be a scale that could work? When I don't know, how long does it actually take to drive from... Um, say, the, well, or the top of Norway, all the way down to, you know, I'm going to just look this up a minute. Well, according to a very quick Google search, travelmath.com says that driving time from Scotland to Greece is a total of 39 hours and one minute, and that's assuming that you're driving in a car. So if you're driving in a lorry and you've got to factor in your extra brakes and stuff you're at least going to double that so they're saying 40 hours of driving time you're not going to drive for 40 hours straight so you're not going to do that into 20 hour stints either although yeah there's probably quite a lot of people that would do that into 20 hour stints um most people would probably split that into three 13 hour chunks maybe even four 10 hour chunks uh, if you're driving a lorry it's going to take longer so my initial estimation of seven days to take a lorry from the northern tip of scotland all the way down through to the bottom of greece it's actually about right i think i don't think that's too far wrong so you'll be looking at it taking in game seven hours real time so that would give you a sense of the scale of the things like i know for a fact that this isn't a bad thing having things so far separated eve online does this beautifully well if you want to travel from one side of the universe in eve online to the other it's not an instant travel thing you can't just go and do it it takes hours and hours and hours. I think it's something like 25 hours to be able to travel from one side of the EVE Online universe to the other. It might be longer than that. It does depend on the um, spaceship that you're taking. I used to do a relatively short trip in a freighter in that game. And a freighter is a very, very, very big ship. It's got very high capacity. It takes... Um, an absolute fortune in uh, goods and it's the largest type of ship in the game well outside of the um, Titan class ships but it's the largest freight ship in the game um, in order to be able to do that though in order to be able to make my trade run the ship was quite slow going so I wanted to move a lot of goods over a relatively short distance of 20 jumps it would take the best part of an hour to do that whereas if i was in a small fast maneuverable craft i could do the entire trip in about seven minutes so that sort of gives you an idea of the scale of things in eve online and it works really well there, so if you want to move a large quantity of goods from one point to another, you've got to put in a lot of time and efforts as a big investment into it. And the same thing can happen with our Mega Simulator game. We could do something very similar. So you've got a large scale operation, everything is big scale, and you want to go and take a large amounts we go back to the durham wheat that i've grown in northern france and 
I've got a buyer in Italy that wants all of my durum wheat. I've got 100,000 tons of wheat that I need to shift. And then up comes a couple of guys who are running transport companies. They can't just load 100,000 tons of wheat onto a lorry and ship it away because the game won't allow mods that increase capacity. So you can't do that can have mods that make some things work better for you but you wouldn't be able to turn your lorry into a 100,000 ton capacity lorry to do it in a single trip wouldn't work so you've got to be able to move a hundred thousand tons and you're looking at lorries that can handle say 50 or 60 tons in one run um, maybe you can have a little bit more and you can have a bit of a road train situation going on and you're able to run say I don't know let's let's give this a stab in the dark and say we can we can pull 150 tons in one go on our trucks and I've got a hundred thousand tons that I want to sell I got a lot. I'm one of the biggest grain producers in the whole France. All right, I'm a high-end player. I've, been, I've invested many hundreds of hours into this game to build myself up to the position I'm in, and I got these people turning up in trucks that can take 150 tons at a time. I'm going to need a lot of lorries on the road in order to be able to shift the kind of um, quantity that I want shifted. It's going to take a lot of time as well, because to get from northern France all the way down to southern Italy, we're looking at a travel time of around five days, just one way, which means that the person who is doing this, if I'm using actual players to do this, it's going to take them five hours to do one trip. And then they get the grain there, and then once the grain has been delivered, then they get payment for the trip. So it, all, it gets deducted from me. Um, I agree to the contract beforehand to pay them X amount. That money is then held in escrow and then it's released from escrow to the other player upon delivery of goods. If something goes wrong, the money is refunded to me. Um, and my wheat as well or something along those lines. I'm not quite sure how it would work. But anyway. There would be ways, checks and balances to make sure that such a contract could be done safely and fairly and nobody's going to be cheated out of anything because the idea of a simulation game like this wouldn't be... That, I mean, some people like EVE Online because it's basically the, the lawless west. It's the wild west of space games. There are no rules. You can't cheat, you can't hack the client. But if you can con someone in-game into giving you money, you're allowed to do that. If you can run a scam and you can successfully steal money from another player in-game without actually hacking a client or doing anything that breaks the game in any way, you are just conning the player into giving you their money, however you want to do it, you can do that. Now, for EVE Online, that works really well. Um, you're also allowed to just go along and blow up the other ships if you want to. If you do it in certain areas, then there will be a police response and your ship will get blown up as well. But most parts of the universe, they don't have the police response and you can shoot as many players as you like. There is absolutely no consequences whatsoever, apart from the fact that you might not be allowed to go back into the safe police run and patrolled areas once you have um, gotten a bit of a reputation for yourself and there is a bounty system in place so if other players get fed up with you doing it too much they can add a bit of a bounty to your name but that's really just a badge of honor it doesn't really do anything to discourage that kind of gameplay in any way shape or form and most of the players that play pvp a lot um, they just use the bounty as a badge of honor and then when it gets high enough they just get one of their mates to kill them and they cash in on the money so yeah that kind of doesn't work but i mean it also it does work because like i said eve online is kind of the wild west of space games so whereas it does work for that 
you don't want this simulator game where you're going to be getting a lot of players who are just interested in driving trucks, driving tractors, running their machinery, running a workshop in order to repair tractors and stuff. This isn't the type of game where we want players to be able to be conned out of money. So we want systems of checks and balances in place to stop the dishonest players from spoiling the experience for the majority of the player base. And I think that would be quite an important thing to make sure happened because that type of gameplay does definitely have a place in some games and it definitely works in some games like EVE Online, but there are plenty of games where dishonest gameplay and scams and conning other players doesn't do anything to improve the gameplay itself. All it does is create an environment that drives players away and makes them not want to play. And a game like I've been describing, this mega simulator game, would only work really well if it had a strong player base. I mean, yes, it could work without a strong player base. So if you happen to be online and there's not very many other players around at the time, the game can still run because NPCs will still o still operate everything in the game anyway. So it is still able to work, it just won't work as well as it could do. Right, that was my TED Talk for today. I am just finishing up my recording session now, so I'm just going to go and check on... I haven't done any moving of silage, we've just been working on the other bit. But this dude over here is along very, very nicely. We've almost finished this because we haven't got all that much silage yet. So I think we will try and move a bit of silage next time and uh, we'll see if we can't finish up some of this as well. And then that way the silage that we sell, we should end up getting a reasonable amount of money overnight, which means we'll then be in a position to like, buy a plow and a cultivator so that we can start working this field here, dividing it up a little bit. I've got several fertilizer jobs that have come up here. We've also got a sowing job right there for soybeans. Uh, I'm thinking that we could go and do these fertilizer jobs a minute and then we'll come back to doing this job in a little while. So we're going to want this one and then I was thinking, well, I could just load up the trailers right now we'll take one load over to the bga then we'll come back and hook on the fertilizer spreader and then go and do all of the fertilizer contracts that we've got available that'll make us another little bit of cash and then we can um move on to whatever else we're going to do next and we can also uh, go back and finish doing all of our silage over there that we want to take to the bga it should be a lot faster Moving the next lot over there because we're not going to be having to do this long travel time every, every time in between. So uh, hopefully things will improve a little bit. So let me just shut that one off again and then move it forward and do that. Here we go. Right, so that one is all done. I need to shut it off and then unhitch it. That's just hooked into the floor. Let's Oh, no, it hasn't. Colour me surprised. I thought that had just hooked into the floor just then. So we'll leave it there in the hope that it won't hook into the floor. We will run over here and put these on the front, uh, on the front, on, on the back of the tractor. And then we will race off. So we'll go along the road for this rather than up across our field. Helper E has completed their task. I very much doubt that Helper E has completed anything. I suspect Helper E has in fact just got to the end of the field and decided he wants to stop for his lunch. So we will We'll go and investigate that in a minute. I'm not going to worry about it just for a minute. I want to get this one going first, I think. We want to get this one unloaded at the BGA so that we get the bit of money coming in for that and then we want to get going with the fertilizer job so that we get the money coming in for that and then once we've done all of those small things then we can go and worry about helper E and what he is or is not doing. We are on minus 1700 which means that at the moment 
we don't have any money to buy fertilizer, but I'm pretty sure there is fertilizer in the um, fertilizer spreader already. So we're not going to have to worry about that. All we've got to do is accept the contract, do the job, and then we get paid. It's as simple as that. A little bit of money coming in. The Most of that money that has gone down is actually what we spent on our own wages up in our field for doing the raking job. And some of it has gone out on other things. But I'm pretty certain that when we, like the cultivating jobs, I'm pretty certain that we break even on those. Or at least make a, a like a little bit of profit. Okay, we sort of anchored around a little bit too tight there. But that was... Not entirely my fault. And we'll bring you up to here. Unload. I tell you, what, well, that one there is unloading. I will go over here. Oh, I see what he's done. He's turned round and... Because I have started a new recording session, he, he basically turned in the wrong direction and got down to the end of the field and then decided he didn't want to do any more because he'd confused himself. Um... Typical AI kind of behavior. I, it would be really nice if the AI could at least like look at the field and say, Oh, I've already rode that bit up. I'll go this way. Instead of saying, Oh, I've already rode this bit up, I, but I want to do it again because I'm not entirely sure the roads are straight. I mean, I admire his, you know, persistence and desire to get the job done right, but at the same time, yeah, I really don't. There's nothing to admire there. He's just being difficult. Right. Off you trot. There we go. You should be able to cope with the rest of the field now, at least for a minute. And we can go back over here. Let's move on in. We want to select the next trailer. Unload this one. So I don't know how much we've put in here. Obviously, we've unloaded our own trailer in here. But there's no way of knowing how much money is going to come in at midnight. Not unless we've been keeping a careful count on the tallies. But I don't think there is anywhere. I don't think there's any board anywhere that you can sort of see how much is owed to you. So you can't really plan on that unless you've figured it out for yourself beforehand there isn't really a way to kind of like plan it out and and figure exactly how much you're going to be getting and so on and I, I don't really like that i think it'd be better if we did at least have some indicator there to say look this is how much you've brought over this is how much money you're going to be getting at midnight I just think that would be, it's just, it's only a small thing. It's quite an insignificant thing, really, in the grand scheme of things. But it's it's one of those things that would just improve the quality of gameplay quite, quite a considerable amount. Has anybody been keeping up with the updates for Farming Simulator uh, for 22? I'll confess that I haven't really been keeping an eye on it lately. I seen that there was a um, a video they released about the new crops, but I didn't actually get time to watch it yet. So I'm still a little bit in the dark about the new crops. Um, but if any of you did take a look at some of the new information, what do you think? Um, I have talked about the production lines that they're bringing in uh, so that you can go and take your produce and then it gets processed and then it gets taken to the next place and so on. It's basically factories that are modded into the game at the moment. Uh, they're making it part of the base game. And I've said before, I quite like this idea. I like the idea of having the factory units there and being able to sort of have a wider variety in the gameplay. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. 
Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.